Hey, I'm Lara, an artist, educator and entrepreneur who's danced through life in Australia, London and California. Now I'm an Aussie in Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Juggling roles as an artist, ex-dancer, current actor, author, professional educator and qualified life coach, I'm also a wife and mother of two. Join me on this podcast crafted for creative souls at every level, entrepreneurs, artists, dreamers, and hope-filled humans alike. I'm here to guide you towards a life of love, purpose, adventure, and boundless creativity. As a healthy, wealthy, and wise creative soul, I invite you to hit subscribe for weekly inspiration. Anticipate solo episodes, exclusive interviews with creative luminaries, and insightful discussions with my hotty hubby, Andrew, a specialist performance physical therapist, as we delve into the dynamics of relationships and more. Dive into a 360-degree view of making a creative life you'll love. Hey there, beautiful creatives. It's Lara here, host of the Healthy, Wealthy, Wise Artist podcast. And in this episode, I want to dive deep into something that is close to my heart, how to reignite that creative spark within you when life gets overwhelming. If you're like me and you juggle multiple passions, you know how easy it is to get bogged down with responsibilities from work to family to taking care of yourself. Life can pile up fast. But here's the thing, when life feels too full, even the most passionate and creative among us can lose that special creative spark and it feels awful, right? like your creative well has just run dry and you're just not in that flow state anymore like you used to be. If that sounds familiar, stick around because I've got some juicy insights to help you get back to that endless wellspring of creative energy. In this episode, I'm going to share six powerful, maybe even a little unconventional strategies that will help you to break through those creative blocks and to reignite your passion for your art, whatever that medium is for you, dance, acting, song, writing, visual art. Let's dive in. Number one, identify and protect your creative peak time. You may have heard me talk about this before. I call it creative beast mode for me. It's knowing when your creative energy is at its peak. For some of us, that's first thing in the morning, aka Lara, the host. (laughs) For others, it might be late at night when everything is quiet and still and all of a sudden a song comes to your mind and your heart and you're just in a creative flow. But figuring this out for yourself is a game changer. And here's why. Once you know your creative peak time, you got to protect it like it's sacred. No distractions, no interruptions, just you and your art. I know that I am not going to do tasks in the morning when that is my time to do the stuff that, cre- you know, that needs my most creative mind. And it's not just about time. Think about when you're your most creative. Do you need a quiet room or maybe some background music? Find out what makes you feel alive and inspired and make that your creative sanctuary and don't let anybody take it from you, no matter what. That's not the time to book that coffee with a friend. You can do that when you're not in your creative beast mode. All right. (laughs) Number two, break the consumption cycle. Yes, unconventional. Now let's talk about something we're all guilty of, consuming way too much content online, whether it's podcasts, whether it's social media, whether it's reading stuff that's just, it wasn't planned. You just go down, you know, that wormhole and don't come back. I know, I know. It's hard to resist that endless scrolling. You don't mean to. The binge watching even, your favorite shows. But here's the thing. When you're always consuming, there's no room for your own creative voice to shine. And I challenge you on this to carve out some intentional time where you unplug. There's even apps that can make you for a set period of time, not get any notifications and not let you into anything if you're tempted in such a way. But yes, I'm talking about turning off the phone, closing the laptop unless you're working on it and just being with your own thoughts. You'd be amazed at how your brain fills the silence with creativity when it's not constantly being fed by outside stimuli. We were playing a fun game with the family yesterday. My son picked out something and the question just happened to be, when are you at your most creative? And I kind of thought, oh, let's just see what he says. And then he paused and he thought, 
when I'm bored. And that is the absolute key, my friend. Let yourself be bored and celebrate it. And then get out a notebook and write down those ideas. (laughs) Okay, number three, creative cross-training. I know, very weird, but bear with. Here's a fun one creative cross-training. If you're a dancer, try your hand at painting. If you're a writer, experiment with photography. Doing something outside your usual art form can shake things up and bring fresh creative perspectives to your primary creative practice. It's like working out different muscles in the creative brain um, and it actually is very powerful for kind of getting you out of any kind of creative funk that you may be in. All right, let's move on. Number four, Rest isn't a reward, it's actually a necessity. Now, we've been conditioned to believe that rest comes as a reward for hard work. But here's the reframe for you. Rest is actually a prerequisite for creativity. Remember I said, my son said when he's bored, because your nervous system needs a break to reset. We live in a very highly stimulated state most of the time. Up on coffee, down on melatonin or whatever it is that um, people take, even alcohol to get them to come back down, uppers and downers all day, all night. (laughs) We need to reset our systems, recharge, and that way we come back stronger. So take that nap, do it for your creativity, meditation, if that works for you, even a walk in nature, and don't feel guilty about it because it's your prerequisite. There, This is kind of the place where your best ideas will come to life if you nurture yourself in that way. All right, number five, reverse thinking for creative problem solving. Okay, so here's a little mental workout for you, reverse thinking. If you're stuck on a problem or a project, start at the end and work your way back. As an example, if you're choreographing a dance, imagine that final pose and that feeling and then figure out backwards how you got there. This can open up new pathways in the mind. There's science to this and ideas that you wouldn't have thought of anyway by following an unusual path. And I know for writers, you know, you you map out things. Uh, Writers, you do things. There's a mapping. But when you get stuck, there's ways to play around without losing your skills and techniques and work things out the other way around. And that can just really help uh, shift your brain out of any funk and help you solve problems differently. All right, number six, embrace simplicity and childlike curiosity. One of my favorite tips and the last one for this episode, tap into some childlike curiosity. Kids have this amazing ability to see the world without all the adult rules and limits we've piled on ourselves or by others over the years. So next time you're feeling stuck, talk to a child, ask them how they'd solve a problem or what they think about something totally random. Like I said with my son, (laughs) their answers might surprise you. I did this with my daughter the other day, no rehearsal. You'll see it's an Instagram reel, um, Facebook reel. It's out there on my Pinterest, LinkedIn. And it's me just asking my daughter about her creativity. And from that, I got three amazing tips um, about the way she approaches her art. So come back to that and spark some really new creative ideas into yourself by being childlike and curious. All right, artist, that's a wrap for this little mini-sode where I want you to get back some creative energy. Remember, creativity isn't about waiting for that lightning strike of inspiration. It's actually about creating an environment where your best ideas can thrive. And I hope you find some of these strategies helpful as you approach your next creative day or week. Give them a try. Let me know if they work for you. Reach out to me on social media. You can go to larabiancapilcher.com as well and email me through there. And if you love this episode and this podcast, don't forget to subscribe and share it with your fellow creatives. And as always, keep creating, building that life of love, purpose, adventure and boundless creativity. I'm Lara, your host, signing off. Until next time, I'm with you on the journey, friends. Bye for now. Phew, today's masterclass is done. I love reaching back and saying I've done this and helping you learn the easy way. 
If you want more, head to laurabiancapilcher.com for show notes, links, freebies, my blog, coaching and courses. And you can also head to my socials, Lara Bianca Pilcher on Instagram and Facebook. I'm also on Twitter and Pinterest. Thanks again for listening. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. That would mean the world to me. And of course, keep on living the healthy, wealthy, wise artist living towards your dream life. Bye, friends. P.S. Shout out to my hottie hubby, Andrew Pilcher, who does all the editing on this podcast. <laughs>